Hey, what's going on, Restoring Hope Church? Uh, hopefully you guys are well today, and uh, we're, uh, we're back. As you can see, we got a few of the Rest Restoring Hope Worship uh, team members with us, and so uh, uh, I'm excited to have them just because we've just been in, uh, you know, we've been in a season of social distancing, so everybody just, you know, don't touch each other. Just <laughs> but we want to, we're, we're like, we're like, we just, we, we, we're like, we, we want to give each other hugs and be like, well, I haven't seen you since. Four weeks ago, so, um, but we haven't, um, as you guys obviously know through everything that's going on, um, you know, we haven't been able to um, really, I mean, Becca, Summer, and Courtney and I, we've been able to, you know, continue to lead, but it, it's really not the same, and so tonight we, we've been, or today, we've actually had the opportunity to have uh, Selena and Hannah with us, and, and we wish that we could have our whole team here. Uh, we miss everybody crazy. Um, but we understand people got to stay safe and people got to stay uh, at a distance. And so um, we just wanted to do something different just because we normally come and, and, and sing and, and we ask you guys to sing with us. But um, we just wanted to give you an opportunity really and truly just to hear from our heart um, and just kind of just hear what's going on in this time just through um, different perspectives. I mean, you know, we have, uh, you know, a, a lot of different, you know, things and, and, and families represented here. And, and so... Um, you know, part of Courtney and I's heart, you know, as, as, um, you know, worship pastors here is, um, you know, we're, we're only as strong as, as, as whenever we have everybody with us, you know, we can't do it by ourselves, and we've never been the kind of people to want to do it by ourselves. Um, and so thankfully, whenever we come here, we had the opportunity to meet, um, and really, um, the best way that I can say how this team is formulated just over the years, how God has brought us together is it's really just a family. Yeah, um, sure. You know, I mean, you know, Summer and David, you know, you guys are from Texas. You know, I mean, how many hours away? Like 18, 18 hours away. 18, um, 18, <laughs> <laughs> 18, 18 hours away. Uh, Hannah, you, I mean, you're originally from Alabama, right? Or no, yeah, North Carolina. Yeah, North Carolina. And that's like 13 hours. 13. Yeah, 13. <laughs> 13 hours. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, same thing with, you know, Beck, you and Eddie. Uh, yeah. Same thing with you and, you and Eddie. Um, but, I mean, and all of us, I mean, Courtney and I, you know, we're eight hours. How far are you and Eddie away? Uh, Eddie's parents are in New Jersey. Mine's in yeah. Indiana. So. Yeah. And, and yeah. Selena, all your family, same thing, New Jersey, and, and kind of, you know, spread out all over the place. You know, yeah. Selena's got a lot of family. So, um, but, you know, really and truly, God, you know, as, as we've kind of orchestrated and, and been together now for um, Courtney and I, we got here in 2016 and we started in 2017, yeah. I believe. Yeah, 2017. So, yeah. Um, just through the years, I mean, really and truly, the only, we, every time we talk about it, it, it really is a family because all of our families are so spread out. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's, you know, we don't necessarily have, you know, we got people in the church and so don't get me wrong, but we have, yeah. you know, really we just have this. And our worship team, you know, really just thrives and operates on just being a family unit. And, and, and really that kind of attributes to the way that we worship because, because we're able to be comfortable with each other. Mm -hmm. um, there's that comfortability with the Lord. And so we just wanted to share, take a moment, just share our hearts with you. Um, and I, I just wanted to give you uh, some perspectives from them. Just, you know, we're all navigating this time together. And, and uh, you know, I wanted you to hear from some of our team members uh, you know, and how they're navigating this time with their families and, you know, what they're doing. And so um, really quick, Selena, just you don't have to, like, tell everybody about, you know, but just introduce yourself and then we'll kind of go. And then that way everybody knows who we are. Um, I'm Selena. I'm 21. I think I'm the youngest out of the group. So I'm like they're everyone's little sister. <laughs> Pretty much. So, uh, yeah, I have two sisters and um, I have two nieces and I have a nephew that we prayed long for. So that's go. a little bit about me. And my sisters live in New Jersey and my other yeah. sister, she's kind of in Ohio and Florida. So, yeah, right. so that's me. Okay, cool. Awesome. I'm Hannah, and um, I've been coming to Restore and Hope for a long time, five years, I guess, since the beginning. Yeah. Um, I have three children. I have a little boy who just turned a year. I have a little girl that is um, eight and a little girl that's four. Um, and my husband um, it, is still working during all of this, which yeah. is amazing. Yes. Um, but... Um, yeah, this is family. This is yeah. this is all I have here right. in Tennessee. This right. is like he said. It's um, I'm I'm blessed to be a part of a church that is so united and right. so together, and you really do feel family here. Right. So, um, I'm thankful for that. Amen. 
I'm Becca. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Um, me and my husband, Eddie, both uh, work at the church and are part of the worship team. We have a son, Asher, who just turned nine, yeah. and Allie, who is six. And yeah, we love it here. We've been here about a year and a half now, and it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's a dream come true. Yes, for sure, for sure, for sure. She asked me to say what I just said. (laughs) No, but truly, they really, truly are. Both Eddie and Becca are crucial to the worship team here and to the church, not not just worship, but what they do administratively and uh, maintenance and all of that. I mean, we're really thankful for them. But anyways, I'm Summer. And uh, my husband and I, David, we work here at the church too, and we've been here from the beginning as well. And we have two boys, a four-year-old and a seven-month-old. Seven-month-old. And um, I, I want to add on how we are so thankful for a church yeah. who really is a family because yeah. so many times people will say, oh, if you need help babysitting or if you need help with right. this or that, Sometimes it can be just words, but this church and our people truly mean it. The genuineness of their hearts and the love that they have, they will drop everything just to help you because that's what family is for. That's including these people. It's including our congregation, our other worship team members. I mean, I cannot stress how thankful and blessed we are to have all of our Restoring Hope church family because as as pastor caleb said we don't have our physical right. families here yeah. but we have a transplant family right. our church family right. here and they have been crucial yeah. for us for sure yeah. yeah for sure no and you know and obviously you guys know um you know courtney and i courtney and i we've been we've been here for um four years well well we've been in tennessee yeah. for four years we've been at the church for three i think we started at the end of 2016 and then and then officially in 2017 so we've been here for at the church for three years and so it's been amazing and so um now that you know everybody let's uh i just wanted to ask them a few questions just to encourage you um and just that, again that way you can hear because you know here's the thing is is a lot of times i think there's this uh, this caveat, you know, you guys sing on stage, you guys must be, you know, just living in the clouds all the time, you guys don't have any problems, or anything else like that, and, you know, especially at our church, you know, thank the Lord, you know, from our, you know, shout out to our pastors, Pastor Aaron and Amanda Crab. you know, they have um, legit poured and poured into us, and really and truly have trained us in, in this way, and and we've been able to experience such incredible services here, um, and, and, and the only reason we've been able to do that is because of, number one, you know, through the Lord, but also, you know, from our pastors training us. And so, you know, but still, you know, what you're about to hear is like, these are real, the, I mean, we're still real people, yeah. um, you know, going through real life situations and going through things, you know, just just like you. And just because, you know, just because maybe somebody at your church, your worship leader or whatever else, they may look like, you know, they're on a pedestal or if they're in the choir or whatever else. You know, yes, we, we may have microphones in our hands at any given moment in time during service. But at the end of the day, I feel like that sometimes there's a disconnect because, you know, all eyes are, are I guess, on, are on us. And so it's like everybody thinks that, not everybody, but maybe some people think that, like, well, you know, they, they, they never go through anything or, you know, or whatever else. When in actuality, you know, Summer, you know, she's part of, uh, you know, she's been part of the worship team, but she's also... Um, she, you know, she kind of, she does a lot. Summer's also been integral ever since day one. Like she has helped, uh, she used to schedule the band, uh, whenever we didn't have a full-time band. Um, and so she worked hard on that. Like she did like kudos to Summer because she handled a lot of stuff that Courtney and I were not ready for. So, so Summer was kind of like, Summer's like, listen, I got your back, but yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Right. (laughs) But, um, you know, Hannah, I, I, you know, I guess I'll start with you. Um, you know, being a stay, stay-at-home mom, you know, and as you're navigating through this time, and, you know, obviously, a stay-at-home mom is, is uh, it's not all cookies and ice cream, um, and it's not all just, you know, where everything just goes great all the time, especially now whenever the kids are running rampant and, and everything else. Um, but as a stay-at-home mom, you know, obviously, your husband, Jeremy, he's been, you know, he's been working hard, so thankfully, he's been out there but you know I just want you to just take a minute and just you know describe kind of what you've been doing you know to just keep yourself you know connected to the Lord in this time and just kind of 
you know, what maybe encourage maybe some single mothers out there who are, are trying to tackle this. And, and, you know, there's some frustrating days and there's some time. So I just want you to just take a minute and just, you know, as not a single mom, but a stay at home mom. Yeah. Uh, sorry for. I've been both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's been both and she's rocked it. She's rocked it out both, you know. And, I mean, even if you want to tell about that transition briefly, just, you know, how you went from, you know, single mom to, um, you know, you know, doing what you had to do and staying connected there, but even transitioning to, you know, now you've got an incredible husband whom we love. Jeremy, he, he actually just uh, officially joined our team and he helps with the slides and he does a great job with that. And so, um, but yeah, just take a moment, just encourage, you know, maybe some single mothers out there or some stay at home moms who are just trying to navigate this time. Absolutely. Um, I know for me, um, and we had talked about this a little bit earlier, um, Judah, you know, being a stay at home mom, is difficult. Um, I've done both. I've worked 40 hours a week and both, both are equally difficult. Right. Um, you know, getting up and going to work every day and then coming home and still you work 24 seven, whether you work and you're a mom or you're a stay at home mom, it's a 24 right. seven job. Um, specifically during this time though, it's very important to, um, keep your mind on things that are good. Right. Um, things that are lovely and that's hard to do when you have kids running around and you know my girls they they fight each other a lot and <laughs> and they you know they they have trouble sharing sometimes and constantly wanting snacks and <laughs> eating everything in the kitchen before noon you know right. um, but definitely keep get, waking up with the mindset of no matter how the day goes today right. I'm going to choose to praise God through it. And I'm going to try to keep my mind, um, you know, on, on Christ and on, on, on what he would have me to do as a mom, as a wife, um, throughout the day. And, and, and this time it's difficult because, you know, my children, uh, my, my eight year old is very confused. She, she wants to play with friends. She's like, well, I'm out of school. Can I go play with my friend Lillian? And I'm like, no, you can't like you, you literally can't. Um, I kind of jokingly was like, mommy, we'll go to jail. If you go to a, (laughs) if you play with a friend, you know, I I mean, I guess, you know, kind of, you have, you have, you have to kind of explain to them in a way that they, it sinks into them how serious right. it is. Right. Um, you know, we can't get other people sick and we can't, you know, we can't, we can't, we can't. I feel like I say that a lot during right. the day. So it's trying to come up with little activities. And, but, you know, asking the Lord for patience is yeah. a very dangerous That's thing good. to do because He will put things in your path as a mom to test your patience. Right. And I remember uh, when Ella was about four or five, I was like, God, please help me have patience with her because. You know, I'm very like straightforward and, and it's very different with a child. They're kind of all over the place. Right. So now that they're all three, I'm there with all three of them, you know, asking the Lord for patience is dangerous because he's going to say, right. here you go. Yeah. Here's a chance Here to is. show, you know, your children, you know, and, and show me your patience. And, um, but if you keep your mind focused on the Lord and you keep your mind focused on, um, you know, what he would have you to do um, and how your children, right. you know, you want them to come up in the fear and admonition of the Lord and you, and you want them to, um, feel Christ in your home, not just when you bring them into the church. So creating an atmosphere for me in the home, wake up and put worship on the TV instead of YouTube, you know, or, you know, Sesame street, help me Jesus. (laughs) But, um, creating that atmosphere at home is important, you know, and, and you can feel the shift in your children sometimes from the chaoticness to, they're making up little interpretive dances to right. whatever songs, you That's know, awesome. being played. So I feel like that is very important. Get your mind focused right. on Christ. I don't have a whole lot of time in the mornings to sit down and for an hour read my Bible and right. for an hour pray. I don't have that luxury. I have more time in the evenings, but right. it's important to start the day. Yeah. That's with good. that mindset that's of, good. I'm going to praise you first. Yeah. No, that's good. And I think, you know, I think one of my favorite sayings, I forget, you know, what, um, what pastor or preacher said it or evangelist said it, but he's like, you know, I, I may never pray for 15 minutes, but I hardly go 15 minutes without praying. Right. Right. You know, I feel like Absolutely. as a stay at home mom, you know, with, you know, you with pray all day. Yeah, with, Lord exactly. Help me. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and I mean, and, so she, and she's talking about patience and she didn't tell you this, but like right as soon as everything hit, you know, her, uh, her son, 
um, you know, they were out just enjoying the day. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, they were out there jumping on the trampoline. And, and you know, there was, you know, she had noticed something was wrong. But, you know, she didn't really, you know. I mean, didn't see anything yeah, happen. Yeah, didn't see anything happen. Yeah. Kids are going to be kids, you know. And come to find out, he had like this little fracture. And so, you know, in his knee. But thank you. Thank the Lord. He's okay. It didn't hit his growth plate. And so, you know, he's, he's good and he's healing. You know, but, you know, like she said, you know, I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot of things. And I think she said it, said it best, you know, just starting the day. You know, just and setting the tone and, and um, setting the the, um, the pace for the day. And so and allowing God to just, you know, be be over the home and just uh, I mean, incredible, incredible. So, um, you know, Selena, I, I know that, you know, you already stated it, but, you know, you you are. I don't think you're the youngest. We have we got some we have we have some young people. We have some we've got some uh, some of the, our youth who are actually a part of us. And so um, but, you know, I mean, with. You know, I, I do want to ask you, you know, I know that, you know, with the news of everything going on, you know, you have, you know, family that's really close to the New York area, yeah. you know, and, and, and um, you know, I just want you, you know, really briefly just to, you know, just kind of just tell us about that, you know, just tell us, you know, how they're doing, um, you know, and, and, and what you had to do, you know, as, you know, as a sister, you know, um, hearing the news that, you know, man, New York's getting kind of bad right now, like, you know, what did you do to, in that time to really just, you know, not only cover your family, but just cover yourself? Yeah. So, like, with the church, we've been taking communion every night, you know, yeah. pleading the blood over us, you know, and praying. And during this time, I do, I, my sister lives in New Jersey, so she's not far from, you know, New York at right. all. Like, an hour, you can take a train. And uh, so, with this time, we've just been encouraging her, you know, yeah. don't, because she's a planner. She's a mom. She has kind of like how y'all do. She has like a seven month old or eight month old right. and so she has babies she has to take care of she's a stay-at-home right. mom and her husband's works in construction so um it's pretty hard on them right now too right you know because you can't go out to the public you know it's hard people don't want the one-on-one -on -one, you right. know they want distance but um during this time we've just encouraged each one of our family members you know in this time you can either make the most out of it or you can make the worst out of right. it and make the most of your time. You know, we are all in isolation. We're all, you know, quarantined. Right. But um, we've just been encouraging her. You know, you have this time with your family. And usually in summer times, it's our b busy season. Right. So we don't get that time. So look at it positive. You right. know, even though it's hard to look at it, like it positive, like you said, I'm the sister. I'm home with my parents, right. you know. So it's probably, I'm like the one that probably gets on their nose, like, hey, let's stay encouraged. And they're right. like, easy for you to say. You don't have babies right. crying. Right. But, you know, even for, you know, youth, for m moms, like I have sisters, you know. So I right. get, I hear that. Like yeah. I know their, like their hearts, they love the Lord. But like Hannah said, it's hard for them to, you know, right. get um, the time that, you know, maybe they fully are used to, you right. know, to, you know, I can wake up in the mornings, I can drink coffee, no babies are crying, right. I can just take my time and enjoy right. it, you know, peacefully. But um, with both my sisters, you know, they have babies and, yeah. you know, they just have to kind of give and take the good with the bad and just kind of right. take the good and pour it over on the bad and kind of just stay positive. You know, and I want to talk to that just really briefly, you know, because all of us, you know, I mean, we're married and we have spouses and, and you know, I mean, you, uh, you know, you have a uh, a boyfriend right now yes, I do. you know but you don't but you don't have love but, to hear yeah me say that. right right <laughs> but but you don't but you don't have a spouse and so yeah. it, it's you know it's different for you because even though you got two great parents you know mm -hmm. at home you know whereas for us like we you know we have you know somebody on. that we yeah. have have to lean on no, I get it. you know so I, I just take a moment yeah. and just encourage maybe sure. a young person who's yeah. you know who may be at home and and you know they're like you know because we all know what it feels like, even though we, that we've been uh, under great parents and stuff like that. Sure. It's easy to feel isolated yeah. at home and just but still be like, your parents, they have one another. Exactly. You know, so um, I'll say even for, I'll t touch on both. I'll t touch on like the youth, even though I still call myself youth. So um, yeah. for the youth, you know, in this time, you know, don't, um, don't feel alone, even though you're with, like you can't be with your friends and stuff. You can still be in touch with them right. through FaceTime, you know, stuff like that. And let's use our, like, use this time. Social media is out there, you know. Right. Um, we can either use it for good or we can use it for bad. So right. in this time, let's be the light we want to see in the right. world. Right. Let's use our Instagrams. Let's use our Snapchats. Yeah. 
post scriptures, encourage one another. You know, when they say, hey, what are you doing? Uh, you need to watch this Netflix series. Say, no, I'm going to read a, this chapter in my right, Bible. Right. So what are you using this time? Come back. And when the church door is open, be feel, right. so filled that you can say, this right. is what I use my time. That's Don't good. walk back in the church the same way that right. we may have walked That's out good. of it the last That's time. Good. You know what That's I'm good. saying? That's so good. let's walk in new, right. refreshed. refreshed. That's what, um, you know, with everything going on, you know, everybody keeps saying if you drink liquids or cleansing, yeah. like keep yourself cleansed, right. you know, everything. Let's walk, when yep. we, let's cleanse ourselves let's at home, you know? Yeah. Like I want to be exactly. cleansed. I want to walk in yeah. with, you know, free right. of nothing. Exactly. And so um, that's what I would say to the youth, to anybody right. that's single. But I want to touch on, like, obviously, because I'm a girl, I want to touch on the young girls that right. maybe they have a boyfriend. Or I know yeah. my boyfriend, he's from out of state, so I don't get to see him that right. much. So, um, yeah, I do have a boyfriend, but it's still, like, a distant relationship, right. you know. So with that being said, I would say, you know, for any girl that maybe you feel alone, because the enemy, when you're at, our, like, my age, the enemy will try to, you're, you don't have nobody, nobody wants right. you, or you don't have a boyfriend, someone to talk to, right. other girls can, you know, kind of that mindset. Right. Know who your first love is. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's Dig good. in your word that's and good. know how God treats you and how much he loves you. Yeah, that's good. And then set your standards high right. yeah. to know that a man right. needs to treat you like the Lord. Right. You know, so find your first love in this time. He loves you and he's waiting. Yeah. yeah. To and not just to me. go like yeah. not just to go on Facebook and seek for the first thing that looks no, good. No, not at all. Right, because everybody's no, bored, right? Yeah, for sure. Right. And you know what? I even say this, social media is great cuz you can use it for good. Right. You know, we can post scriptures, but if sometimes you have to discipline yourself. Yeah. And if you see you that you're on um, social media more than you are in your word, yeah. then it's time to sign off. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> it's time to that's log good. out. Maybe it's yeah. time yeah. to fast. Yeah. You know, cleanse yourself. And I feel like sometimes when we sign off those things, it kind of brings conviction upon right. us to say, what have I been doing in this yeah, time? It's kind sure. of a realization, like a wake-up call. Yeah. Um, I did that a few weeks ago, and it was a wake-up call, like, yeah. oh, my gosh, how much time has I, have I spent on yeah. Facebook? Yeah. Like, And like I said, it has its good and it has its right. bad, but don't spend all your time in this moment right. doing things that's um, – not going to make us who we need to be when we come back to church. Let's, right. let's come back stronger. Um, right. What's the saying of um, every the setback? Um, it's like a comeback. Oh, you know, uh, the one step forward, step two back step back is for your comeback. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. The setback is for your comeback. Because yeah. oh, Pastor Aaron says that the, the setup or something like that. Yeah. The setup has been. Yes. But yes, Pastor Aaron will just have to share with you. <laughs> yeah, but yes, we're going to come good. back It's good. It's really stronger. good. Yeah, we're going to come back. Please comment yes. on our group. <laughs> no, but. Please tell us. Comeback. That's yes. it. That's it. Your yes. setback is setting you up for your comeback. There Thank you, go. Hannah. She she there came. She got it. No, I'm but to my yeah. <laughs> Bonus <laughs> points. Um, no, but I mean, I think I think you said it right, though, yeah. Selena. I think in this time, you know, especially because here's the thing: is you know, right now, this is and these are facts. The, the biggest number of cases come from, you know, this age our age group. You know, and, and listen, we all want to be like nobody more than us knows how bad we want to be in, in communion yeah. together and just being together. But here's the thing is like, you know, Selena said it. God, God has given us a space and a time to really just draw close to him. Yeah. And so uh, well said, well said. Yeah. Um, well. I'm going to talk to uh, I'm going to ask this. Uh, and she was like, I don't like pop quizzes. But uh, this one is for uh, this one is for Becca, her and Eddie. Uh, I'm going to tattle on them. Her and Eddie, they joined us. Um, they joined us uh, almost two years ago. About a year and a half. About now. a year and a half, yeah. Almost two years ago. And it was just like, uh, Eddie was here before. Uh, I had asked Eddie to come uh, and sit with us and talk, but he, uh, he had other plans for, for this. <laughs> um, but, but we still love him. He does, he does a lot for us. Um, but, you know, I, I remember... Um, whenever they first came in and literally Eddie had already been here, you know, Becca was back in, in Ohio on the home front, you yeah. know, just kind of getting things together. And literally we had, uh, Eddie James one night and, uh, out of nowhere, you know, I see Eddie and I'm like, who is this guy? And then all of a sudden he starts playing and I'm just like, we need him. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's keep him. And I didn't know, I didn't know. I, I hadn't met Becca yet and stuff like that, but, um, but, I mean, honestly, over the past two years, just from, you know, because now, you know, because we know what it's like transplanting from eight hours away. Oh, yeah, it's hard. You know, from, from a spot of, okay, every, from a sure thing to, yeah. I don't really know. You know, and yeah. you guys are still in the season of kind of like, you know, you guys are settled, but, you know, there's still a little bit of a transition, you know. So, you know, I just 
you know, share a little bit of, you know, you can share a little bit of your testimony, but I, I really just, you know, feel like that, you know, you can really speak to a lot of people right now who are in the middle of just transition and, and yeah. where, where, you know, things may be unsettled right now, but, but you guys, you and Eddie have, have really, you know, maybe before there was like some, you know, okay, Lord, what are you doing? But now, you know, you're almost two years in. And now that God is, is settling some things and the dust has settled a little bit in the midst of transition, you know, what, what, would you, what would you say to somebody, you know, who may be in transition right now, who's yeah. trying to navigate not, not just coronavirus, but just whatever transition looks like? Yeah. So when, when we moved to this area, we didn't have any jobs. We didn't, we yeah. didn't know anybody. We just felt led to come to the Nashville area and we just quit our well-paying jobs yeah. <laughs> with two children right. and just and just moved from Ohio didn't know nothing nobody no right. job opportunities so we were crazy yeah. we were crazy <laughs> but um, so when we got here yeah it's during that transition there was one phrase that God gave me that yeah. I I just really stood on and I think it's good for anyone in transition like even now if if you've lost your job or if right. you don't know. And like right now I'm thankful to still be working, but right. there's times in my mind, I'm like, well, what if in two weeks, what if, what if you know, whatever. So your yeah. mind, even though your situation is fine where right. you are, your mind can right. run yeah. away right. with you and right. that fear can enter. But one, one phrase God gave me was, and I'll try to explain it, that he stands at your end right. and he can see your beginning that's good. and that's he good. can see all the way through. Yeah. Wow, yeah, and that, good. that would give me such peace and comfort knowing that, Though I don't know my next step, he's already at, he's standing in my victory. Right. Yeah. Like he's standing there and I can talk to him right. while he's standing in my right. victory. And That's all good. I have to do is take step towards That's that good. and That's know good. that there, there's a, a firm foundation as I'm walking in, in right. faith. Yeah. And I, I kind of liken it to when you're teaching a child to walk, like you'll, yeah. and you guys know this with little babies start, starting to walk. Oh my God, it's so little, <laughs> so little, but, um, you put them a couple right. feet away from you, you move, right. right? But you're never too far to catch them before right. they right. fall. Right. And in That's their right. mind, they're going to fall. Yeah. Yeah. And you're too far right. to catch them. But you know, as the parent, right. you've set them just far enough yeah, good, that you're going to catch good. them when they start yeah. to fall. Yeah. And that's the image I get when I think, okay, he's at my end, but right. he can see my beginning, right. my whole life. He's, yeah. he's standing at the end of my life, right. but he can see my birth and every step that's in good. between. And all I have to do is look at him yeah. And walk towards him. And That's like good. when you're teaching a baby to walk, you're like, look at me, yeah. look at me, yeah. you know, come towards me, keep your eyes on me. Right. And I think that's so important is to keep your eyes right. on him and, and get in your word. Yeah. I had to have certain scriptures like this is your promise. One of my biggest scriptures is let those who trust in you not be ashamed. Yeah, that's good. Like, God, that's good. I, we took this step of faith. Right. Don't let me be ashamed right. for it. And I don't want to shame your name. Right. I don't want to say, God told me to move here, and two months later be like, just kidding. Right. You know, because you know what I mean? I don't want to put him to shame, and God, right. you know, that's I, I don't want to shame your name. Um, so I would, I would say that almost every night, God, I trust in you. Don't right. let me be ashamed. Right. Don't let me be ashamed of it. No, that's great. No, I mean, yeah. and, and, you know, I if you watched our uh, live worship set, you know, um, you know, we was we was talking about that. You know, God was just moving and, you know, we was talking about how, you know, Peter was walking on the water yeah, and just, exactly. you know, just that focus. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and I want to I want you to, you know, to talk about that, because if you don't know, um, Eddie um, and Becca, they really they've they've teamed up and they really do a good job of, of, of really just leading our band. And, and mm -hmm. um, I mean, I mean, I'm telling you, whenever they come in, they, they really you know, we appreciate all of our musicians, but, yeah. you know, Becca, you know, she kind of, um, you know, or she don't kind of, she does, she, she, she gets the charts ready and she does, you know, she, um, she's really kind of the, the backbone, her and Eddie are, you know, around surfacing the, the songs that we do. And so, you know, I, you know, talking about that focus, you know, I want you, you know, to just speak to maybe a, a, a band leader right now, or, or, you know, maybe a worship leader right now, who's, you know, trying to navigate this time and yeah. trying to keep the band focused and, and, you know, keeping it fresh because, you know, we're, we're trying to, we're all looking at cameras right, right. now, yeah. you know, and so, you know, as a band leader, you know, what, what would you, how, what, how would you encourage, you know, maybe another band leader just to keep, keep the focus in, in what they're doing and, and don't lose heart in this season? Yeah, I, there's, um, I was thinking about a story in the Bible 
just the other day um, when Jesus was at Mary and Martha's house. Yeah. And, you know, Martha is running around doing everything. She's busy. She's working. Right. And Mary's at the feet of Jesus. And Martha gets mad. Right. Like, listen, I'm, I'm doing all this stuff. And she's sitting here. Right. Mm -hmm. And I and Jesus says, you know, th there's one good thing. Right. There's one good thing. And Mary chose the good thing. Yeah. And it made me think about um, when I was in college, one of the professors would say, losing your salvation in Bible college is like starving in the middle of a grocery store. Oh, yeah. It's all around wow. you, but not in you. Wow, that's crazy. And I think awesome. there's a lot of Marthas right now who are so used to coming to a church building and working, right. working, working, working. And now that they can't, they're like, what, yeah. what do I do? Because right. your service, you mistake your service for your relationship, Ooh. you yeah. know? And, and not that you shouldn't serve. That's not what I'm saying. Right, you yeah, definitely need to serve. It's, it's your worship yes. to God, but don't let it, when you leave the church, right. let it end there. It right. needs to start at your house yeah, when you're good. at the feet of Jesus because then, of course, that's where it, why you can pour out. Right. But speaking to worship leaders or band members at this time, you have such a great opportunity yeah. to sit at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. Right. You don't have to, a lot of like, we don't have practices like we, we right. used to. Like we're still going to be learning new music and, right. and I encourage that for sure. Still yeah. learn new music. Yeah. You have social media. You can push out charts to your, sure. your musicians. You can have vocal practices over Zoom, whatever. Yeah. Like still that, still keep that consistency right. for your team. Right. But at this time when you don't, when other things are unnormal, get at the feet yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Choose the one good thing yeah. so good. and be yeah. there. For sure. No, and, and, and. You know, and that's one thing that we, that our, our pastors have always instilled in us, you know, and, and you'll hear us say this a lot, but Pastor Man has always said, you can't lead people to a place where you're not coming from yeah. yourself. Um, and before, you know, that's, I'll, I'll testify, you know, for on behalf of this team, you know, Courtney and I will, you know, just that, that we have some of the best singers and musicians and thank God for that. But at the end of the day, what, what we love more so than anything is being able to have a, a, a conversation and, and, and it being able to go from, you know, just something normal to, man, super spiritual in, in a moment. And that, we, that these people, you know, are coming from a place of relationship mm -hmm. and coming from a place of, man, we've been here, we've experienced things, and, and, and God's, real, God's been real to us. And so, you know, and that's what I appreciate about them. So thank you for that. Thank you for, for you know, I mean, that, yeah, I mean, hit it on the spot. Um, I'm, I'm going to pick on my wife here just a moment because, you know, I mean, you know, we've all... We're living, you know, most of you, uh, if you're watching and you don't have a job right now, you guys are, you know, trying to navigate this time. And, you know, my wife, you know, last week, you know, was informed, you know, hey, uh, you know, we're just going to, you know, uh, essential, uh, just drive through. And, and we just don't have, you know, being a waitress, it's tough because, you know, that's the main source of your income. You know, that's, you know, I mean, it, it, it helps. I testify about that, too. Yeah. A week before, like, think about this, like. The week before all this was going on, and a lot of restaurants were closed around us. Yeah, like like when everything started yeah, to hit. and yeah. when everything started to hit, and like my regulars were like, "Here's twenty bucks. Here's twenty bucks. Here's yeah. twenty bucks." So, I was just thanking God that like He was taking care of me. Right. Like He yeah. knew what was going to happen. Right. I had no clue that, you know, the next week I was going to not be able to work because I'm a I'm a worker. I yeah. love making money. I love shopping as y'all probably know she does um it's just one of those things that i work hard to do what yeah, i want does, you know so i mean that's just what i do um i don't have to ask you know babe you know but um i'm just i'm thankful that you know my regulars that just he knew yeah. they knew the need yeah. And but God knew the need, and right. so He He was providing for this week. But yeah. thinking about next week and the week after, okay, God, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, I just have to trust in Him. So every day, I'm waking up, and I'm like Him and I, like He He gives ten minutes, you know, for God and like yeah. praise and stuff, and and I'm just really taking this time to seek His face yeah. and to know, okay, God, what are you wanting? to pour out of me in this season? Right. What are you wanting to pour into me in this season? Yeah. Um, and just really seeking his face and knowing that, yes, my job's great and I'm thankful for that, but knowing that even if for another month or two I don't have a job, that I'll know that he's going yeah. to provide, yeah. that he's, he's going to take care of us, that yeah. he is faithful, um, and he's never, he's never lost in our life. Yeah. Like I can go back to when we first moved yeah. here. Um, 
it was hard because Caleb was trying to find a job, and I was like, I'll go serve. I love people. I love meeting people. You know, I knew I could make pretty good money. And so I, um, I went back to where I, I, yep. it was comfortable, and um, I, I'm pretty much what? Paid the rent yeah, that she, week. I mean, she, like I mean, God, she, I have no shame I don't do to say that now. she paid it all. But so. <laughs> like in one no week, shame but whatsoever. in one week, it, and it's just because God is faithful. And yeah. he's, and if you give your tithes, if you give your tenth, yeah. he's going to provide yeah. for you. Yeah, that's he good. has you. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I don't, I'm not even waking up worried. And yeah. honest to God, if this happened last year, mm. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I would do. I would probably right. run to dad. Go. Yeah. I'd probably go to Arkansas yeah, and just be yeah. like, look, dad, like, I'm fearful. Yeah. But I think, like, I'm thankful for this year of growth yeah. and, and y'all yeah. too. But in, in this, this season of, I feel like the preparation of, yeah. you know, what pastor has been preaching about seeking and asking and knocking because he's there and yeah. and just everything that we've experienced this year I think that it's it's helped me through this season of you know no income I mean it's been a week that we haven't had my income and um, but I know God's gonna provide and just knowing and standing on his word right. knowing and standing on his truth and again I talked to him about the Peter um, story today I, I was in the word and um, and man I went to Matthew 14 22 and um, I was just thinking of that, like, okay, imagine, I always put myself where they are. So, like, Peter, okay, he was on the boat. Everyone was on the boat. Ocean was going crazy. Storm was going crazy. Jesus was walking on water. And Peter and all the disciples saw him. And, and the thing is, is if, if he would have lost focus, which he did, he did lose focus, and he did, right. you know, he did drown. Not really drown, but he, <laughs> but he did. Oh, yeah. what, what was it? He did sink. Yeah, Yeah, he started to sink. sink. And the thing is, is that Jesus picked him up, picked him up and carried him back to the boat. And they walked on the water together, just like she was saying. He is with us. We are together in this. Like, he's not going nowhere through this. So I'm just thankful for that. And one thing that we've, we've, um, you know, because Courtney has the pleasure of me preaching to her every day. Yeah, it's hard for me to speak with him. Because I'm like, hello. (laughs) She gets, she gets, she gets a sermon (laughs) every morning. No, but. (laughs) But one I thing, was telling him, and he's taking it. Right. You know? I mean, and, come and on. Really and, tru- really and truly, you know, through this, she's been an encouragement to me because as a man of the house, you know, you, you know, whenever you're depending on two yeah. incomes, you know, and, and, you know, that income is suddenly not there. You know, as a man of the house, you know, that, that, that instinct rises up and you're okay, like, okay, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? You know, and so I'll testify that she's really been, just been an, an encouragement to me, you know, in that, and, and her being so firm and steadfast and knowing Okay, then that makes me be firm and steadfast and know. And one thing that we've 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 clung to, one of my favorite sayings that that God led me to, is that um, whatever God leads us to, He will bring us through. Yeah. Um, and whatever season or situation that He brings us to, you know, He will always provide a way of escape. And so, you know, I'm super thankful for that. Um, Summy, saving the best for last. Summer, yes. summer. Listen, summer is, um, uh, and we'll finish up with this. But summer, uh, about a year or so ago, pastors really just kind of, you know, we, we started to really look at teams in our, in our, in our church. Um, and we started to um, really just uh, focus on, you know, not just being, you know, um, people who come to church, but actually being connected. Um, and it really just shifted. It, it really just shifted because we started, we, we began to talk about, um, you know, apostolic teams and, and not necessarily the you know the name above the door don't get me don't don't get me wrong there but just really just operating in yeah. the fivefold ministry mm-hmm. um and what that looks like and and you know just um and and being activated in that and that's one thing about summer is you know summer is you know she sings and she is a great singer and she's she honestly she's been holding it down and and she she don't like to step out and sing very much but she can she can sing the microphone out all of you um yeah i mean everybody can um, but the thing about summer too is on our team, and this is what I love because we don't just have a team of just people who can sing. We've got people on our team who can intercede. Yes. We've got people on our team who can pray. We've got people on our team who who know how to touch the Lord. And, and summer really and truly mm-hmm. is that pillar on our team yeah. that she really, um, you know, she's got a prophetic gift on her life. You know, yeah. the Lord visits her in dreams. Um, and he really speaks to her. And, and so, you know, a lot of times, you know, she'll come in and she's feeling something and, and it'll just connect because, you know, God will speak to people. You know, and I want to say this to if you're a leader out there, you got to trust your team. 
You know, because here's the thing is, is we live in a day now to where it's just like, okay, well, you guys just do it and then have a couple people back you up. No, honestly, I will stand here and tell you if I didn't have this crew and all of our crew over there and everybody here that makes this thing work, it, it, it wouldn't work. Um, but thank God that we've got people on our team that hear from the Lord because if Summer's feeling something, Hannah may be feeling the same thing. Selena may be, Becca, it doesn't matter. But that whenever we come in together, we've got the wherewithal within us to be like, okay, you know, God, you're saying something today. Um, and so, you know, Summer, you know, you, you, you just said you, you've got a brand new seven-month-old um, and, you know, a four-year-old. You know, how have you, how have you been, been navigating that? You know, because I know it's like in all the hysteria with everything, you know, and I know it's tough for you because it's just like, you know, you got this, you know, innocent baby, you know, you're just like, you know, God, you know, what do I do in this? You know, so how have you been, you know, keeping yourself, you know, just built up during this time of, you know, just craziness and just, you know, everything with, especially with a brand new seven month old and then, you know, four year old who is very active um, and he wants to do everything, you know, so how have you been keeping yourself, you know, just, you know, built up in the faith and just encouraged? Well, first of all, prayer, like you said, yeah. intercession is is truly, um, I'll go back a little bit. Yeah, do it. For, for pretty much my entire life, I've struggled with what is my calling, what is my gifting. Yeah. I, I can do this. I can do that. I'm not, I didn't feel like I was great at anything. Right. But God has really, truly opened up the gift of intercession within me. And intercession and worship are together. Yeah, they together. go hand in hand. Um, and, and that's a whole other, I could go yeah. on and on <laughs> Next time. about that. Right. Next video. Yeah. But um, myself, uh, first to answer your question, is prayer. Prayer right. is the most important. It's not just words that you're speaking into the air. Mm -hmm. They truly grasp the ear of God. Right. And to, to make time even if it's super late at night and right. you're exhausted and you're falling asleep because you're yep. dealing with kids and you're running around, or even if you, which nobody likes to do, have to wake up 10 minutes earlier before your child wakes up right. wanting to eat or whatever, whatever you have to do, yeah. get away, get away from your yeah. husband, get away right. from your children for just a little bit right. and focus on God, yeah. pray to him get into your word. That's been the biggest thing for me right now because I'm actually thankful that we have this time of quarantine, if you yeah. will, because it's allowed me to focus more on my relationship with God and yeah. build yeah. my relationship up with him even more so yeah. um, because we have so much time on our hands right. now. You know, right. yes and no. Yes, we have children. We right. Some of us are still what working, yeah. but... We, we have a little we more, have time. Time, yeah, more time than we had before. Yeah. So like Selena said, using that time wisely yeah. Yeah, and good. not just reading the word. So what has been different for me? I, I've read the word. I'm like, okay, God, I, I believe in you and I trust in you and I, I'm going to stand on your word. And sometimes that can be spoken a little emptily, empty right. yeah. I don't think that's a word. You can be a little yeah. bit right. empty in right. your words. Yeah. I have truly taken and dissected each and every single wow. word awesome. and applied it. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't understand to the full extent of how to do so right. until these quiet moments yeah. alone with the Lord in prayer, in intercession. And intercessors yeah. can tend, intercessors and prophetic people yeah. can tend to be peculiar people. Right. They are picking up things in the atmosphere. They are discerning things. Right. Sometimes they can be a little distant or a little um, just peculiar, right. maybe a little quiet, maybe a little heavy. Or sometimes they could be full of joy because they're picking up the victory. Right. Um, whatever it is that they're walking through and, and discerning in the Lord through the Holy Spirit, that um, they, they help carry yeah, for sure. and push past mm -hmm. moments that right. we're in. And they're interceding yeah. for f families, for your family, for yeah. your children, your husband, for our surrounding families, our communities, our nation. And I think I'm rambling no, at this no, point. I mean, no, but you, <laughs> I don't no, know if I answered no, your question. You, yeah, no, you, you, you answered <laughs> it. And, and, and you actually went to, you know, kind of what I just want us to finish with. But, you know, I mean, here, here's the thing is a, is a lot of times, you know, here um, we believe um, – 
you know, in the full activation of what God wants us to do. And, you know, you summer serves on the um, on our prayer team, our intercessor team as well. And and, um, you know, the thing the thing is, this is and here's what I want to encourage you with as we um, get ready to finish up for today is that. You know, the word prophetic has got such a bad name in this day and in this time because we've had, and I'm not speaking against anybody, I'm not, so don't even, but what I'm saying is, is the word prophetic has gotten such a bad rap because, you know, it, it's, it's always been about, um, I'll say this, it's, it's, we've had a lot of loose cannons, so to speak, um, and that there's not, not necessarily been anything to stand upon and you know, one thing that we've learned as a church, you know, we've been through seasons of, you know, a glory season or a, a really just, uh, just, um, you know, weeping season, weeping in a good way, you know, in an intercessor, uh, an intercession, excuse me. Um, and so as you're navigating that, you know, if you, if you're a part of a spirit filled church, or if you, you know, maybe you're not a part of a spirit filled church, but you feel that, that gumption rising up on the inside of you, that full activation, you know, obviously, you know, seek leadership, you know, and, 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 and go chat with your pastors. But here's the thing, what God is trying to establish now, we cannot operate just off of a normal level. Um, and that's one thing that you heard from each of them is that without prayer and without relationship, there would be no way we could survive. And that's, that's how this team operates is we, you know, we, yes, we, we're, we're, we're going to show up. We're going to be prepared musically. We're going to be prepared to sing. Um, we, we thank God he's given us the best, but at the end of the day, we cannot do it unless we hear from the Lord first. We cannot do it unless we come from that place of relationship. And so, you know, we just wanted to encourage you, uh, today. Um, and really just uh, speak over you and, and, and encourage you, you know, that, yes, we're part of a worship team. We're with you in this time. You know, we're all looking at cameras and we're all looking at, you know, uh, TV screens and stuff like that. But here's the thing is what God is doing in this time is he is removing the barriers, removing the things. Um, you know, I, I think back to the heart of worship. You know, I'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you. Right now, there's nobody in churches, and it's all about him. There's no sports. There's no, there's no, I mean, there's no distractions in this time. And so God is calling worship teams to get away from the lights and the smoke and the glitz and the glamour. Listen, we all love it, but God is calling worship teams. God is calling teams to get back yeah. into prayer, to get back into relationship, and to come back into unity with him. And so... Uh, we love you guys. We're going to pray over you really quick. And then um, thank you guys so much for joining with us. And, and hopefully we said something that encouraged you. And, and, you know, like I said, we just wanted to give you a moment just to hear, you know, that, you know, from a, a worship team and, and um, you know, just that, hey, look, let's step aside from the worship team part. But people who are actively going through this, um, you know, as we're serving through our church. And so um, let me pray over us and then we'll, and then we'll, uh, we'll close out for today. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. And Lord, I thank you for this team. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for their testimonies. Lord God, of what they, uh, of who they are, and what they, uh, what they stand for. And God, Lord, I just pray, God, Lord, that you would just um, let this, Father, Lord, go to flourish. Um, and that something today was, uh, something said today, God, Lord, would, would go and, and to speak right to the hearts of, of worship leaders or worship teams or, or whoever that may be watching, Lord God, that as we're in this season, you're removing the distractions, you're removing the things, Lord God, that, that so easily beset us. And so we just, we say thank you, Father, for a cleansing. We say thank you for a resetting and a refocusing. And uh, we thank you for being near to us in this time. And so, Lord, touch, heal, and deliver. Father, we just give you the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching with us. And uh, don't forget our pastors every day at 9 a.m. Um, are coming to you. Uh, you don't want to miss it. And so uh, be looking out. We got much more content coming uh, for you guys throughout the next coming weeks. So um, we'll see you guys soon.